my name is Megan Ross and I'm studying a Bachelor of Psychology at Monash University. I was on the VC Honor of Psychology and today I'm going to go through the General Adaptation Syndrome, also known as GAS. So in this video we're going to go through the different stages of this syndrome and then we're going to go through a scenario and go through the strengths and weaknesses. So to start off, what is General Adaptation Syndrome? Well, it's a three-stage physiological response to stress. Now, keyword, physiological. Now, don't get this confused with psychological. So physiological is referring to the body and psychological to the brain. So this is our body response to stress. So this model occurs regardless of the stressor that is encountered, meaning that it is non-specific. So if you see a snake or a spider or if someone jump scares you, your body goes through the same stress response. There is no differentiation between this. So the three stages is alarm reaction, then we have resistance, and then finally we move on to what we call exhaustion. Now I'm going to go through these three stages individually. So we'll start off with alarm reaction. So this is our first stage, and this occurs when the person or animal first becomes aware of the stressor. So the body goes into stroke where the ability to cope falls below the normal level. And then the body will then go into what we call counterstroke, where the sympathetic nervous system is then activated and the body's ability to cope increases. So for example, you find out a really something really stressful in your life or you have a test coming up. So your body will go into shock. So your ability to cope will fall below normal levels and then it will rise back up because your sympathetic nervous system, which remember sympathetic, we're sympathizing with our stressor, which will then, so that'll activate our body's response, which will bring up our levels of adrenaline and cortisol. It'll cease digestion, all of those kinds of things. And that'll increase our ability to cope, which is a part of our counter shock. Moving on to the next stage, which is resistance. So the body's ability to cope goes above normal level. We're coping better than we normally would. So our intense arousal diminishes because adrenaline goes away, cortisol takes over, but psychological arousal remains above normal. So that's due to our cortisol. And the body prioritizes functions to support this. So digestion, growth, libido, menstruation, testosterone, and sperm production all decrease or even cease during this and our heart rate and blood pressure will be higher to cope with this stage because that's the opposite. So the immune system does get weaker due to the prolonged release of cortisol which then leads us on to our final stage which is exhaustion. So if the stressor is not resolved during the resistance stage the body's resources will be depleted. So resistance to disease and illness is weak and the organism is susceptible to physical and mental disorders. So really that is due to cortisol, weakening our body and weakening our immune system. So we are vulnerable to disease and sickness, so the flu, the common cold, anything. And it can also lead to hypertension, gastrointestinal problems and heart disease. So hypertension is high blood pressure. Gastrointestinal problems is because our sympathetic nervous system is decreasing our digestion, so it'll lead to things like constipation. And heart disease is one of those things that cortisol can cause. And in very extreme cases, it can lead to death. If an organism is extremely stressed out for a really long period of time, it can lead to death. However, that is in very rare circumstances. This diagram here will help us comprehend this model a little more. So to start off here, this is stage one. So this is our alarm reaction. So this is where our ability to cope goes below normal levels. So we go into shock, so it goes down. And then when we hit counter shock, it'll go up as we can see here. So they're the two different stages of alarm reaction. And then as we can see going by this line here, our ability to cope goes above normal level levels. So that is resistance. And then as we can see, as we hit exhaustion, it starts to go down below normal levels. Now I'm going to take you through an exam question to show you how you'd answer a type of question. Now this is from the 2018 exam and it is the 10 mark question. So it does require us to write more than guess. However, I'm just going to extract that. So if you haven't seen this before, please pause the video and check it out. So with reference to Jeter's situation, write a detailed analysis of her sources of stress. So we're going to focus on our biological response because that is what gas is for. And now I'm going to go through and highlight some key areas that are relevant to that in the scenario. You can see that she goes into an alarm reaction by this quote here. So when Jita lost her part-time job at the beginning of semester one, she experienced an initial shock but quickly tackled this. So we can see that she went into shock and then counter shock, so that will be our alarm reaction. And then we can see she went into resistance from this area. After Jita's relationship breakup at the end of semester one, she developed a cold but still managed to stay on top of things. So we know this is resistance because she still managed to stay on top of things. She was coping better than she was before. And the final stage here is exhaustion. 
So towards the end of semester two, Jida developed insomnia and headaches. So we can see that she's getting sick here and her ability to cope has dropped below normal levels. Now we're going to look at our strengths and weaknesses. So this model is good because it links stress and disease, and it is also supported by empirical research, and it helps to identify the biological process. However, this is a one-size-fits-all model, and it does not account for individual difference. It also overlooks the psychological response to stress and fails to explain the different symptoms of exhaustion. Some people get muscle aches, some people get gastrointestinal problems, some people get sick, it just doesn't account for that. And it also doesn't explain how different stresses can trigger specific stress responses. And this model was also founded on animal studies, so can it really be generalized to humans? That is up in the air at the moment.